Hello, my name is Joshua, and last year in the year of 2022, I somehow managed to read 125 books. The reason I say somehow managed to read is because the majority of those books, almost half, were read in the month of December. I read 54 books in the month of December, but I made my goal of 125 books, and I'm very proud of that fact. So I was going through all my records and trying to figure out which books were my favorite from last year, and it is really difficult. I also realized that well over 50% of the books that I read are science fiction, which happens to be my favorite genre, but apparently is also like the most genre I read out of everything. So I buy a lot of fantasy books, but apparently I just don't read them. I just buy them. So because I want to read them, but I just read science fiction. Here we are. It's a thing, I guess. So here are five of my top science fiction books of 2022. And I want to talk a little bit about each one and share the reasons that I found them very interesting and the reason they're on my top five books list. So first off is Remote Control by Nadi Okorofor. Nadi Okorofor very quickly became one of my favorite authors this year. I started off on this journey with her books with Binti. And Binti is a trilogy. If you have not read that trilogy, I highly recommend you do. It is phenomenal. It's beautifully written. Nadi's writing style is just, oh, chef's kiss. It's so good. So I read Binti, the first book in the series, and then in the month of December, I decided, because her books are shorter, uh, or some of them, like Binti and Remote Control um, and other places in outer spaces, so I picked up a few of them and I binge read them, and my word. So Binti was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed Binti, but then I read Remote Control afterwards, and this took the cake. Remote Control by Nadi Okorofor is absolutely beautiful. The writing is gorgeous. The story is immaculate. The concept and the idea and everything. I don't want to tell you too much because I don't want to spoil it because I feel like this is one of those where you really have to go in blind and that book just fell. That is very frustrating. But you know, I don't think there's no damage. We're okay. It's okay. The book's okay. Let's move on to the next book because I think that was a sign. <laughs> we have Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Kindred is another one. Please don't fall. You're going to, okay, don't fall. Don't fall. I'll, let, let's try to do this and see if that helps. So Kindred by Octavia E. Butler is a science fiction with time travel. And the main character has no idea that she even is able to time travel. At first it's for a few moments and then every time she does it, it lasts longer and longer. And where she's time traveling to is into the times of slavery. And it is heartbreaking. It is incredible. It The writing is in, like, I say incredible a lot and I'm sorry, but this book was seriously incredible in every aspect, way, shape or form. The writing, the prose, the story, the concept, the ideas, the characters, the character development, everything. This book is everything a book should be. And I highly recommend you pick it up. If anything, pick up this book because it is just so good. So it is by Octavia E. Butler. I have not read any of Octavia's other work, but I do plan to read more of her work this year. I already own Parable of the Sower, and that will hopefully be on my March TBR. So we'll see if that happens. The third book I want to talk to you about is Recursion by Blake Crouch, another author who quickly became one of my favorites this year. I read Dark Matter. And no, I read Recursion. No, I read Dark Matter first. I read Dark Matter first. And Dark Matter was really good. It's definitely, it almost became part of this list. So this is Dark Matter. It almost became part of my top five. But the more I thought about it between these two books, I think I liked Recursion more because the idea and the concept and everything, it's just... It's incredible. So it deals with time travel, but it does it in a very interesting way. And it really cascades and affects everything. And these characters have such strong development. And just my word, some of the stuff that they face is just crazy. And it's a little confusing, but it's very fairly easy to follow. I will say, I think this one was more confusing. I think this one was a little more complex than this one, just because of so many different timelines and things happening at the same time and trying to figure out what's going on whereas this one you really are confused for the first half of the book it is awesome it's amazingly written but the craziness of it doesn't happen till like the last fourth of the book whereas this is like the entire book is craziness so anyways Blake Crouch became one of my favorite authors this year um, I am currently reading Upgrade, which is the book that was released in 2022 by Blake Crouch hoping to finish that in January this month of 2023 
Next up is Andy Weir. Andy Weir is well known for his book called The Martian. A lot of people felt his second book, Artemis, was a flop. I personally did enjoy it. It's more of a young adult, whereas The Martian and Project Hail Mary are adult science fiction. This deals with space exploration, uh, first contact. It is very interesting, and Rocky is one of my favorite characters to have ever existed. I would love to see more in this universe, in this timeline, maybe like and what's happening on Earth while the story is taking place, because the very beginning of the story, basically this person is on a spaceship and he is flying away from Earth to try and figure out what's going on. And, you know, um, there's so many layers to this. There's so much subtext and plot going on and so much behind the scenes. It is, I would consider this more of a hard science fiction because of the concepts and ideas that it's taking, and it does explain some of the math, but a soft science fiction in the sense of it's very palatable and easy to read. Because hard science fiction tends to have the connotation that it's a little more difficult to follow, it's a little difficult to digest, especially if you don't like technical stuff, and you're not a huge science fiction nerd, but to me, hard science fiction is more, it gets a little more into the technicalities of science fiction, how things work, but it doesn't necessarily means it's not palatable so i say it's soft science fiction in the sense of that it's palatable because a lot of people tend to associate those two words with such uh, but this book is seriously amazing and if you have read this book or if you haven't i want you to read mickey seven by edward ashton mickey seven is just so awesome it is the it's space exploration but they're cultivating a planet and the concept is that mickey is an expendable which means he can't get out of his job even if he dies he's still stuck working because they will just make another clone of himself upload his memories and have him continue to do his job so there's a lot of layers to this. There's a lot going on that you learn about Mickey Seven, why he even took this job to begin with um, as you read the novel. But basically, the context of this book is at, towards the beginning, Mickey Seven, so he is a seventh clone, essentially, of himself. He is given the difficult jobs, the jobs that might kill someone because obviously they can bring him back. So he falls down this rock, rocky cavern and he's deemed dead. And so they decide that he's dead. We're not going to risk our lives to save him. So they go and they make Mickey eight. But lo and behold, Mickey seven is not dead. So then it comes into question, okay, what happens if there's two of them? How does this work? Can they interact? Is this okay? Um, is this ethical? Because there's two of them. Like, that's not that's not good. Is th that what? And so it, it has a lot of those questions. And it was really interesting. I'm also very excited because this is getting made into a movie. It comes out 2024. The second book comes out March of 2023 this year. And I got to interview Edward Ashton on my podcast. So that was really, really fun to get to know Ed a little bit more and to talk about Mickey Seven, to talk about the second book, to talk about the movie and everything involved. And it is just awesome. So this is definitely one to keep your eyes out. I highly recommend it. Um, there is a his local bookstore, I believe, is Dog Eared Books, which is where I ordered mine from. And so it came signed and it has a little doodle and it is really fun. Um, since we're on the topic of movie and show adaptations, I thought I should rep or should mention that Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, which I somehow misplaced, is was turned into a TV show, I believe, on Hulu last year, and it's out now. I have not read it yet. It's on my list of shows to read this year or read this year, shows to read this year, shows to watch this year. Um, anyways, those are my top five books of science fiction that I read in 2022. Thank you for watching this extremely chaotic video of me not knowing what to do or how to film this. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I will be posting more on this platform very, very soon. So make sure you stick around for another chaotic video where I know nothing of what I'm doing. Have a wonderful day, and don't forget to subscribe.